Crispy. Basilio. Crispy. Basilio. Hi, my name is Claude and welcome to my channel. This, as you can see, is my very first YouTube video. Uh -huh. I'm going to be talking to you guys about Nali Me Tangere by the one and only Jose Rizal. Well, I decided to read this, or at least reread this, because it's a requirement to read it in high school, and it's been like five years since I've read it. So I decided to reread it, not only because Independence Day, but I think it's a really relevant book and story to what's going on now in terms of politics mainly. What I have here is actually the English translation by Leon Maria Guerrero. It looks so worn down. I bought this in like 2014 and it's 2020. So this book has been sitting on my bookshelf for like five years. And why I'm reading that translation is because, well, one, I don't have a copy of the Filipino version right now. And two, my Filipino sucks. It's so bad to like admit it because I am Filipino and I did grow up here in the Philippines but like my first language is English. I can speak Tagalog. I can. It's just hard for me to and I would really rather not embarrass myself on the internet. Yeah. And before we start, I just want to say that this is not going to be some kind of detailed analysis into Noli Metangre. This is just my ramblings because I don't think I have the brain power. For the people who haven't read the book, basically, Noli Metangere is a book written by Jose Rizal showcasing how the Spanish used to abuse the Filipinos way back when, when they were occupying the country. And it mainly shows the story through the eyes of one of our main characters, Chrysostomo Ibarra. And it's mainly through his point of view with like snippets of other people's subplots and in-between moments, which I found really messy. But I mean, Jose Rizal got his point across. He sparked a revolution and our country is free. So he got that going for him, I guess, when I was 15 and reading it in school. I think I just thought of it as a book I had to read for class, but I did end up liking Noli Mitangere for the most part. But let's see how I think about it five, six years later. <laughs> so let's get right on to Noli Mitangere. So what did I think about Noli Mitangere in 2014? And as someone who at the time was a big fan of Divergent, of The Hunger Games, or any story with some kind of a rebellion or a war, I was a sucker for. And knowing that Jose Rizal wrote Noli Mitangre to showcase how the Filipinos were being abused and manipulated and everything in between by the Spaniards way back in like the 1880s. So if you don't know Philippine history, in around the 1500s, the Spaniards came in, so they took over our land. They erased the culture that there was back then. So they turned us into a Spanish colony. Please don't come for me if my history is wrong. Please. So as I said, I was a big fan of any story that came with the war, or at least the, just knowing that this book caused a revolution, that should have been enough to like hook me in. 15 year old me was pretty hooked. What I remember from way back when is that the only thing I hated about Nolly was Maria Clara. I hated Maria Clara with a burning passion. I just, how is Maria Clara the ideal Filipina? Okay, okay, fine. Maybe back then in 1880, Maria Clara was, was the ideal Filipina. You know, just mahin hin, quiet, pa bebe. Oh, and like super Catholic. Nothing against Catholicism, but like there is more to being a woman than knowing how to properly dress, knowing how to properly pray, knowing good etiquette and manners. Like, Women are so strong. Filipinas are so strong. And I think Maria Clara is not the right character to showcase that. I think that was why I really hated Maria Clara. Even though I had classmates who loved her, who idolized her. Girl, please don't come for me if you're watching this. <laughs> Okay, so here is a description of Maria Clara before we're properly introduced to her. The girl was fair of complexion, perhaps rather too fair. 
Her eyes, almost always downcast, reflected the most innocence when she raised them. And when she smiled and showed her small white teeth, a rose would have seemed the merest vegetable and the purest ivory nearly an elephant's tooth. Around her white and graceful neck, underneath the transparencies of the native pineapple fabric, a diamond necklace, as the native phrase went, gaily winked its eyes. Only one man did not seem to feel her luminous influence if one might call it that. Come on. She she was literally compared to a vegetable. Hosa Rizal, what the f I know this is a translation, but like, Hosa Rizal, what the f If in the original text, she is actually not compared to vegetables, someone just comment below, okay? I just, I can't. Okay, so here's my take in female main characters. There is nothing wrong with a strong female character who is very feminine, very into fashion, very elegant, very classy. Because a main character who is strong and powerful does not always have to be a tomboy. I'm not saying Maria Clara has to hold a sword and a gun, but she might as well metaphorically hold one, if you get me. So we'll get back to more Maria Clara later. Can we also just talk about Ibarra's character arc? Or rather, lack of character arc. Here's the thing I have with Ibarra. He left the Philippines at a really young age to study abroad in Europe. Okay, cool. You do you, man. Go. You go get that education. Yas, bish. But you would think he would come back to the Philippines 10 times smarter. Not just book smart, but just socially, politically. Like, come on, bro. You went to Europe, the land of monarchies, and you came back an idiot. He's just so naive. It's a good thing to be idealistic. It's another thing to be blind. You have countless of other people telling you, do not trust the fires, do not trust the governor generals, do not trust them. And what does he do? He trusts them, believes in them. And then what happens? He gets excommunicated because he's a fucking idiot. He's also got some kind of deep-rooted anger issues. Like, I get that the trigger word for him is probably his father. Like in chapter, um, I don't know. Like in the chapter where he goes to the cemetery to visit his father's grave for the first time, and he finds out that someone dug his father out, threw him in the river, and just dumped someone else's body in there. I'd be pissed too if someone did that to my father. But this guy, Ibarra, he grabs onto the grave digger and just yells at his face. And I'm sure that if they weren't in public, Ibarra would have punch the guy and then later on we're at the festival festival was it a festival i can't even remember we're at a party or whatever and this dumbass father damaso doesn't actually like outright insult ibarra's father he throws a bit of shade talking about how like they will all end up as they deserve the friar went on the hand of god is in the business you would have to be blind not to see it even in this life the fathers of such vipers get their punishment they die and go <laughs> and so to speak don't have but he was not allowed to finish Ibarra, vivid with rage, had been following him with his eyes, and on hearing this allusion to his father, leaped up and struck the friar on the head, knocking him back stunned. Surprised and horrified, no one dared to intervene. Is Ibarra's reaction justified? Yes, boy was provoked. And I don't blame him. But the thing is, I wish that he had more pride in what he did, because I... Because he defended his father. Why are you gonna go back two chapters later and apologize for something that was justified? Why didn't you defend yourself? You were defending your father's honor. This man had someone dig out your father from his grave and throw him in the river. And you're gonna apologize to him? Granted, you're excommunicated and you can't marry the woman you love because of it. But... Dude, why can't you just make a stand for yourself? You did what you believed was right. It would have been so much of a stronger story if Ibarra had just stood his ground and was like, no, I don't care that I'm excommunicated. Marie Clara, I love you, but this man, this bitch just insulted my father. I am not gonna stand for that bull. So why did he have to apologize? Later on, we have Elias running in, telling Ibarra, bro, you gotta pack up all your stuff and get the out of here and go to some other city or country or whatever because there's gonna be a rally tonight there are gonna be protesting tonight riots and violence and these people are going to say that you commanded them to do it and Ibarra was just like wait Maria Clara okay fine he loves her and that was kind of sweet that he immediately thought of Maria Clara but like boy run go to Maria Clara's house say goodbye and get out 
Okay, so later on, Ibarra does get arrested because they have witnesses all saying that these dudes were screaming, Ibarra, Ibarra commanded us to do it. And then Ibarra is just the one dude who has no proof that he did not command them to do it. So thankfully, we have Elias who busted him out of prison. And honestly, this part was pretty vague. I'm not sure I understand what exactly happened. Did Maria Clara go down to the dock and meet Ibarra? Or did Ibarra and Elias somehow get a boat and bring him? it up to the side of Maria Clara's house which I'm assuming is like overlooking their water or something I don't know, I'm stupid. Maria Clara and Ibarra have their first and, spoiler alert, their final kiss. And it's kind of a bittersweet moment because their first kiss would have probably been at their wedding since religion and decorum and etiquette was such a big thing back then. That was the most likely thing to happen. And later on, when Ibarra and Elias attempt to escape, what happens instead is that they're caught and Ibarra sacrifices himself, jumps overboard, and tells Ibarra to make a run for it and the chapter ends with so at the end of the chapter they say that there was blood in the water because they ended up chasing whoever jumped overboard then nothing was ever said about the guy who was left on the boat and it doesn't clearly state if it was Elias or if Ibarra somehow got in the water too and died. So the story ends with Maria Clara and Father Damaso and plot twist turns out that Maria Clara's father Damaso's daughter. It's no wonder he's always had such a tight grip on her and tells everyone that I'm her godfather, I know what's best, but it's because he is her father. That's the issue. And no one knows except for Maria Clara, Padre Damaso, and Father Salvi. And knowing that Father Damaso actually raped Maria Clara's mother it's so disgusting and wrong because this man tells everyone that I am a pious person. I am the most respectable person here in this town, probably in this country, and everybody should listen to me. And you find out about this, which is kind of a big thing. So Father Damaso practically had big dick energy this entire book. I want to talk about Father Damaso. So Father Damso obviously is a priest and he is Maria Clara's godfather. So the backstory in the Capitan Tiago chapter is that Capitan Tiago and his wife Pia Alba have been trying to have a child and nothing was working. So Padre Damaso tells Pia Alba, let's go on this journey to this... I forgot what that's called when you go on a religious journey. Pilgrimage. You're talking about a pilgrimage, you idiot. Uh, yeah. To this statue in this area and pray to Our Lady of blah 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 over there and hopefully she'll give you a child. And then she comes back and she is pregnant and ends up with Maria Clara. And the thing is, when they came back, Pia Alba was described to be depressed and unhappy. Even though she had the thing she always wanted, which was to have a child. So what changed? And then later on, when it's revealed at the end who Maria Clara's father actually is, that's a bit whoa. Finding out that Father Damaso did that, like even though throughout the entire book he was an asshole, knowing that he raped someone, because he keeps going on and on about how pious and religious he is, turns out he raped someone and impregnated someone, and in the end he at least granted Maria Clara her wish of going into the convent. So just want to point out that I actually don't think that should have been how it ended. I think Maria Clara should have taken those letters that Father Salvi gave her, went to some kind of authority or to Captain. Santiago and told someone about what Father Damaso did because that's not right and Father Damaso deserved to have been punished for it. Which he was not happy about. Okay, so here's the thing about Padre Damaso. The entire reason why I wanted to reread Nolly Matanger was because of how relevant Nolly Matanger is to the events of now in 2020. Not exactly the pandemic, but everything else, if you get my take. Now, who would Padre Damaso probably represent here in 2020? So other than the whole Chrysostom Ibarra and Maria Clara and Father Damaso plot, we also have a subplot of Crispin and Basilio and Sisa. So Crispin and Basilio are two brothers. Basilio being the older one, Crispin being the younger. I cannot remember their ages. I think they're like eight and six, seven and five. I don't know. 
you get the point. Anyway, so we used to work as sacristans. So these boys get paid every day. And based on my understanding, they sleep at the church and come home every end of the week or so to see their mother. And the night they were scheduled to go home, they were both talking about how Crispine was being accused of stealing some missing money. And these priests, they wouldn't let Crispine go home without returning the money. They dragged this poor boy, kicking and screaming, leaving Basilio behind and for Basilio to run home and ask for help from his mother. And the thing is, the next day when Sisa comes, she actually, she talks to the priest and they say that Crispine went home and that she's a liar, that she should also be arrested. And then she goes home to find two soldiers looking for Crispine and Basilio. And they mentioned that Basilio is able to get away and we don't see Basilio again until the end of the book. And then Sisa is wondering just where her boys are and they arrest her. And when they did, they bring her back to their governor general or commanding officer and he tells her the padre should not just keep accusing other people every time money goes missing your boys are free to go you guys are not accused of anything anymore and that's it that was done but the thing is she's so overwhelmed with grief that she just goes crazy she just goes crazy and inspires the whole crispy <laughs> basilio over and over again that is so iconic in philippine literature and theater and that was a bird and she just goes crazy until the end of the book caesar's husband actually goes out and finds ibarra knowing that ibarra would be the only noble rich man who would be able to help and he is and he tried to but he never found crispina and basilio he finds Sisa and tries to get her help but to no avail as well so it just shows how the poor is often overlooked and easily accused kind of not far from today if you ask me at the end we have an epilogue and in the epilogue we have Basilio reuniting with his mother in the forest and she has been so hung up on grief and sadness and depression that she must have been overwhelmed with joy upon seeing Basilio and she must have been so happy that she just died in his arms and that's a pretty tragic moment and as he's crying in the forest a man appears out of nowhere a man basilio has never seen before and he says to him go start a funeral pyre and help me bury our dead and then the man later tells basilio i'm going to go away there's some money hidden over there take it and go live your life and it's never clearly stated if that was Ibarra or Elias because we know that Elias told Ibarra that he took Ibarra's money and buried it in the forest in this specific spot that I cannot remember. So both of them knows that info. Both of them are men that Basilio has never seen before. In the story, Basilio never actually meets Ibarra. Ibarra meets Sisa, Basilio's mother, but he never meets Basilio. So Basilio doesn't know who the fuck this guy is. And then we end the story not knowing who survived, Ibarra or Elias. Yes. When Maria Clara confronts Father Damas about the truth, she promises she will never tell anyone as long as he allows her to go into the convent. And okay, this is what bugs me about the ending to Maria Clara's story. The reason why she wants to go into the convent is because she sees herself with no other man. She loves Ibarra that much. And okay, I respect that. I respect never ever wanting to be with anyone else other than the man you truly loved. Because everybody didn't know El Yas was in the picture. So when they saw blood in the water, everyone assumed it was just Ibarra, which is not entirely wrong to do so. So everyone assumed it was Ibarra, including Maria Clara. And Maria Clara revealed that had Ibarra gotten away, she was hoping she would be able to find a chance to escape and reunite with him. And that's beautiful. That's something I would have loved to have seen for her. For her, Maria Clara, to finally be happy. And then she says that she'd rather be in a convent than be with anyone else. And okay, fine, I respect that. But I think it would have just been so much stronger if Maria Clara just wanted to avenge Barzeth because if she really loved him she would have believed that he had nothing to do with this she would have believed that there was more to the story to what actually happened why not tie up Ibarra's loose ends like the school he wanted to put up or finding Basilio and Chris 
spleen and reuniting them with their mother and just getting down to the dirty truth of what was happening behind the scenes why couldn't we have had a strong filipina character like that why is our ideal filipina someone so weak-willed such as maria clara and that is why i don't like maria clara at all the story is beautiful but maria clara just has to get a grip Another thing I really wanted to talk about was Jose Rizal's writing. This great man caused a revolution with his book, with Nolly, with El Fili, the sequel, and <laughs> there are just some things that I find really questionable. Jose Rizal's obsession with telling and not showing. There is literally an entire chapter dedicated to the character Capitan Tiago. Why? It was just an entire chapter of backstory. I don't understand why we need an entire chapter just for someone's backstory. You're supposed to sprinkle all those little details throughout the book and let your readers put the puzzle pieces together. But essentially, dude, come on. Back to basics. I don't know. I'm gonna give Osiris all the benefit of the doubt and think that maybe he had a deadline. Maybe he had a word count he had to meet. I don't know. All in all, Nolly Matanare was a good book to read. It is a good book to read. And I think that future generations should still keep reading Nolly Matanare. And it should still be required reading in Filipino schools. I just wish that teachers had taken the time to properly discuss and analyze the contents of this book. Because it is so rich. And I really do wish that future teachers would take some advice from just a girl who likes to read. It's such a beautiful book and a beautiful story even though maria clara can go suck someone's dick so yeah if you like my review if you didn't find me boring and annoying then like my video maybe subscribe comment down below and maybe i'll come back with el Fili or another story thanks guys dum, dum.